Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. I thought we would do a video on the IS-7 in 2024, and we're going to be having a look at a replay from Covinci. Now, just as kind of a little backdrop for this, uh, I know a lot of people edit uh, their replays or edit their highlights. I do it in a lot of my videos, but in general, I wanted uh, to kind of showcase this whole replay just so we can talk about some of the ideas and also the vehicle itself and the positioning. Because one of the most important things about War Thunder that I feel like isn't showcased a lot, because obviously a lot of content is highlight based, you don't really know how people get to the positions or what they're looking at when they're going to those positions. So people instead just try and hammer to those positions and hope for the best. Also a bit of a backstory about Covinci. Vinci is in Tech ES. He's an Italian dude, and he's amazing at the game. Um, he's easily the best tanker that I've ever had the privilege of playing with. If he wanted to basically do anything in the game, he could in a very, very good way. And is a person who is worth learning from. He's a guy who hangs out on the Tech Hub, and also is obviously in Tech ES. And I'm sure, you know, he's always down for chatting if people are interested in stuff. So big ups to Corvinci. He is an insanely good player um, in terms of ground. So yeah, let's get started with the IS-7. Obviously the event for the IS-7 is coming out. And therefore I thought we would have a look at this replay and kind of show you what it's like in this year. Uh, basically the IS-7 came out in the good old summer event, if you remember that. And generally it was an event that was very tough to get. And Gaijin kind of dangled the carrot over a lot of people with the IS-7 since that event was so hard and it's one of those vehicles that is very much sought out. Now, the reason why this is because it's got a good gun, decent reload, very mobile, very nice set of secondary guns on it as well, and you can basically go forward and just hammer people, very similar to the 279. But the difference is the IS-7 doesn't have as much of a stabilized gun and at the same time isn't as IMBR so you can kind of you know make fun of that. So Covinci is using the IS-7 as you should aggressively going into the targets and then just bish bash bop <laughs> straight away we've got a kill and then a bit of a lull because as you can see his team hasn't really caught up with him. He gets unlucky with the R3 there, doing a little bit of damage, but not a lot. By the way, I've left markers on because there's no way of actually turning markers off here. So instead, what you have to do is you basically just have to uh, kind of see both sides. So that's why you see the enemies. I wish there was an option where I could turn off enemy markers, but there just isn't. Now, he's been able to get into this high progressive position with this heavy tank and also be able to just deal with two enemy targets very quickly. This has given his team a front foot, and he also checked if there was anybody going to Alpha, and there wasn't. So he can just chill here and basically just hold back the enemy forces as we're going around. The only problem is, of course, artillery is a thing, scouting is a thing, so he's definitely scouted at this point, and if this R3 just kind of sits here, there's not a lot he can do. His team also has absolutely no presence at Charlie, so he can't go too ham in this area because he could easily get flanked by the guys coming in from Charlie. So it's a bit of a waiting game, unfortunately, uh, for this setup because he can't really do too much with it. So there you go, an IKV is able to hit his barrel or something else is. He has to retreat. Another artillery is on top of him as well. So even though he's got in this really incredible position, He's not able to fully utilize it because of that R3, and it shows how important scouting is going forward. So then we have the XM800 team just in the back line causing a bit of damage, which uh, is <laughs> funny to see. I know a lot of people who don't enjoy facing that thing because of these types of reasons. But, you know, he gets his uh, barrel done, he gets everything ready to go again, and luckily he didn't take any other damage in that setup. Unfortunately, getting stuck in that position meant that he couldn't really do anything in terms of the flow of the game. So now that he's left that position, it's down to the enemy to push up. And uh, there won't be a lot of support for people who are there. So overall, you can see what scouts is on the map. There's a bunch of light tanks and also the kind of shot cal in the front. So you can either go left here because the flankers from Charlie are coming in. 
or you can go straight. And both decisions are fine, but if you have a look at like the setup here, there's a lot of allies which are um, which are sat there, so you'd hope that they could deal with them, and <laughs> it looks like they're having a bit of a problem. But the problem mainly is there is no pressure up top. So that guy was scouted, overpressured him with the round, which by the way, uh, this IS-7 round, since it's such a large caliber and has a lot of explosive mass, does actually overpressure stuff. So that's like amazing, um, which makes it a lot easier to do. And then goes for a cheeky uh, shot with the guns here. The machine guns on this are heavy machine guns, and you can see the one mounted on the top is very high compared to the rest. So if you have your control set up, so you can actually control that one compared to the rest, it's really, really good because you can actually use it to look over things and machine gun stuff, and it has pretty good pen. So we have a T-92, gets unlucky with the shot there, somehow doesn't kill him, uh, but it's finished off by an ally, and now he's back to the position where he took, which gave his team the initial advantage. The problem is, his team is not in the best position, but uh, he can still push forward, he can still hold this road, and kind of take out any target that decides to push from uh, the spawn. But, as I said, his team's not in the best position, they need to move a bit forward, they need to take some aggressive, aggressive areas around Bravo, which is why Covinci is still stuck in this area. It feels like sometimes when you're in this setup, you are dealing with like a box, right? And you can see him looking for the planes, you can see him looking for guys coming this way. The BTR is doing a fantastic job. He's doing what needs to be done, scouting any of the enemies that are near. So Covinci can actually push up here, knowing that the BTR will be engaging stuff from the spawn. It just has to watch for the flank. Do you see why? Do you see what he's doing? As he's pushing up, he's looking right all the time, down the roads, because he knows this front is secure, he has to have a look at the rest of them. And then, you know, using the BTR effectively, who's been scouting targets, then just taking some out as he goes, trying to push to the right-hand side. Now, the BTR's dead. There's not a lot of support, so he has to move back. And also, at the same time, somebody got through on Bravo. His team was capturing, and also, they got donked. <laughs> so now, he has to go back and clean up. Smokes to block the view and then pushes up. The guy got marked because he got bombed, but decided to not move back. But now he's kind of in a bit of no man's land. This is where the look comes in in games. Whoop. Uh, so that is a funny shot because it didn't overpressure the target. But he could have easily got shot in the back here by, you know, the advancing stuff. But he got lucky there, uh, which is really nice. You can see him using the machine gun on the top here, by the way. Like, that's, that's what we talk about, you know, using the machine gun over the... Uh, of the setup, that's really cool. Um, it means you can shoot targets and not show yourself off. And this shot is hilarious. So, he fires, and it overpressures half of the crew of the M60. It somehow overpressures two of the guys in the turret, but not the third one. No idea how that happened. But, uh, you can see that, you know, the these two American tanks are struggling. But at the same time, because Covinci's team's having a bit of a problem, trying to push forward, they're having an issue. Now, they're being engaged, so now he can look at other areas uh, where people are coming from. He hears this SCB coming in, uh, just like we did, and gets super unlucky with that shot. Oh my god. We've all been there. I feel like we've all uh, set up. But the cool thing about the i7, it actually has a semi-automatic loader, so its reload on the gun is way faster uh, than... Uh, way faster than other larger caliber guns. So if you miss a shot like that and you're able to angle behind, uh, you know, uh, destroyed carcasses or, you know, physical models, you generally don't have too much of a bad time. But you can see here, he's using the carcass to block that road. So if anything comes around the road, he's good. On the left-hand side, there's an SPG, which you can see is looking over the spawn over there. And then also the team has slowly pushed up to Bravo, but is still struggling. Now, he's in that kind of situation again, kind of like what he was with the R3, where he can't push forward because of this vehicle. Luckily, the STB uh, exposes a bit too much. And remember what we talked about before? Where the IS-7 overpressure stuff? Well, there you go. Now, he gets lucky here, 
and uh, that M103 could have looked at him and killed him. But once again, just didn't look at him. Once again, gets slightly <laughs> lucky. Well, this isn't really a luck thing. This is more of just an IS-7 tanky thing. It is a heavy tank. It can take a lot of hits from bombs, rockets, and also just tanks in general if you angle well. And what he's been doing a lot is obviously trying to put physical barriers between him and, uh, and you know, the stuff coming in. The Baduka, it just doesn't have heavy enough armor. So you can just machine gun that. That leaves the gun uh, available. He missed the guy on the left there who scouted. But you can see the problem that's coming in now, which is all of the CAS moving in to deal with the IS-7. And he really is just a lone soldier here. You know, he's pushed forward. He's been able to hold this area, control it really well. And luckily, there hasn't been too many issues from the right-hand side, especially since his team has put absolutely no pressure on that area. That could have been really, really bad. So, time to go a bit more aggressive. Time to push forward and see what he can do. There's an M48 there. Can't really deal with him. So, one, one of the things that I want to actually mention here as we're going through this replay. One of the key things that Covinci does that not a lot of other players do is the fact that he is able to look at the map and he is able to see that his teammates are in specific areas. He can he knows where their line of sight is. So if somebody does get past him in terms of a vehicle or in terms of anything that's moving around, he is able to not just follow that guy and, you know, worry about where he's going. Because he knows that guy's going to run into two lines of sight. Like that M48 there, he's going to run into this guy, this guy is looking across, this guy is looking across, and this guy who could easily be looking across too. So you don't need to chase these guys. You can actually look at other angles where, um, where people are. Now this can bite you in the face quite aggressively, but there's nothing you can do about it. Sometimes you have to, especially when you're playing solo, which Covinci does a lot, I do a lot, you know, many of us do, you have to take chances like that, otherwise you're gonna have issues because you're gonna be chasing targets which are already gonna be annihilated, it's not gonna work. So your positioning is important, you understanding where your teammates are and their positioning might even be more important because you have to adapt to what they're doing instead of just adapting to what you are doing. So, <laughs> why is that done that? Uh, have I bugged it? Oh no, I think I may have bugged it. Let's <laughs> No way. Right, there we go. <laughs> right, so he's pushing forward, having a look for that M48, but also Alpha is being capped, so he knows something else is over there. Checking right, so he can make sure there's nothing over there, using, you know, these little barriers to, uh, to control that. Not pushing out too far. Uh, well, he did actually push out a little bit too far there. <laughs> Once again. Not pushing out too far, though, to be able to actually cover himself on the side. Now he's got a cross, and oh, there's a Chovet. And then also an M163. Oh, dear. The M163 is able to uh, have an unfortunate time. But look at the reload rate on this IS-7. Like, it's crazy uh, compared to many of the other larger vehicles. Reminds me of stuff like the Servasse, which reloads even faster. And there's that M48 once again. Unfortunately, did beat... Uh, the guy that was there, but it doesn't matter. You can overpressure M48 super easily with the IS-7. And there you go. That's a nuke. Playing around the Bravo cap with the IS-7. And one of the things you may have noticed through all of this, he only got shot once, maybe. Because his positioning was so damn good in the vehicle, and he was able to play off his teammates so well. This is why it's important to watch people like Covinci and people who play like him, because there's a there's any right any person can just sit there, be super aggressive, and just get lucky at going into an area and hammering stuff. What makes a player truly skilled is being able to adapt to your teammates around you, what they're doing, feed off them, and actually enhance their experience and make them even better. Anybody can solo carry by, as I said, going to a position, a meta position, getting lucky, hammering stuff over and over again, the true greats of this game, especially in ground, are the people who can basically raise the rest of their team up by not just covering their areas, but pushing where it needs to be pushed, and also defending where it needs to be defended. Did, 
I suppose is <laughs> the word. So there you go. Nuke time for the IS-7 and Corvinci. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank GMG Smiley, CD Beans, Chieftain Mike, EMN3 Galaxy, Tulio Pontecovo, Brendan Quinn, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Wartinder, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Ozzy Panzer, Alan Hacker, Liam Shear, Opium Prime, Lafouche, Sem Aslan, Uncle Bean and Derek R for supporting the channel.